Hello everybody, by now you must have understood that today in this video we are going to learn about pivot table. This is something if you are familiar with Excel you must have used very frequently right to summarize the data. This is what we use this for right basically to get the insight of the data in aggregated form. So that's exactly what we are going to learn today in this particular video. So here what I'll do is I'll use Excel for reference so that it will be easy for you to understand. I will show you how you create the pivot in Excel and how can you do the same thing in python right so here i'll be showing you um, how you can replace the things which you do in excel uh, with python so in python we have one module which is called pandas you are most you you must be familiar with this thing right if you are watching this video i i believe that you know what pandas is okay so pandas has one functionality which is called pivot table that's what we're gonna learn today now let's take a reference from excel if you walk in excel and if you have created pivot table you must be very much familiar with this particular box this is this must be one of the favorite thing for you right so here we get many boxes like rows columns values etc 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 and whenever we wish to do some sort of summarization or aggregation what we generally do is we just pick column and drop in the respective boxes when it comes to pandas pivot table functionality it is important to understand what are the you know substitute what are the parameters that we have available in pivot table with substitute substitute to these all options right or boxes okay let's have a look on them one by one so let's start with this row box row for this rows box we have a parameter which is called index that's what we're gonna use in pivot table for columns we're gonna have columns same for values we're gonna have values parameter okay other than this in values what we do is we provide the aggregation method right so here in pivot table in values you would see we are providing the columns and then along with that we also need to provide the aggregated functions if you don't provide that by default it will give you the um, average or sum or sorry mean of the column whatever you specify in the values parameter okay without wasting the time let me take you to the jupyter notebook and try to let me show you how you can do this right so before i take you to the jupyter notebook let me show you the excel file so here is the excel file that i have and i'll be using the same excel file in my jupyter notebook to create the pivot over here right so here you see we have how many columns six columns and we have approximately 100 rows right so here in this uh in in pandas when i imported it right so you see here um this is the import segment which i believe you must be familiar with right this is how I just imported it to be on safer side what i did is i use this parameter so that uh i so that it will ensure that i have the date column in the date format only right and to ensure that uh, you see over here over here i have the metadata information which clearly shows that app data is in date time format all right so in this particular data frame we have 100 records and six columns then here we see all of the uh these these are the object variables when i say object that means um, character variables right these are the numeric variables on which it will perform the calculations and this is the date time variable the sample of the data looks something like this and these these are the list of columns all right now let's jump to the excel and try to summarize this using pivot table okay so here is what we have now let's say we want to understand here you see the professions are there this is uh, bank loan uh, data right this is a subset of bank loan data where we see that profession of the customers have been given or applicants have been given the gender of the applicants and whether they have their own house or not what is their monthly income or maybe uh, we can rather say just the income and what was the amount of loan which was given to them and what was the day when they had applied for it right these are the columns which we have now for example if you want to see what are the professions that we receive the application from so you simply take profession and drop it into the rows column and this is what you see over here now if you want to take count of this what you can do is you can pick any of the column from here for example let's say income and just drop it over here so in excel by default it gives you this sum here you have to if you want to have something different then what you need to do is you just need to change the function and then you get that count okay now let's just see how can we achieve this thing in pandas okay so over here i'm just going to say data frame name that is app this is the data frame name that we have created over here app and dot here you need to say pivot table 
so in pandas we get two functions one is pivot and one is pivot table pivot table is the advanced version of pivot so this covers all those things almost everything which comes under pivot so that's why i'm directly going to explain about pivot table and not the pivot now over here if you remember in the very beginning i said here in excel we in the rows segment we dropped profession column right so in place of that here we have index if you remember right so here we are just going to say profession and if you hit enter this is what you get so you, one thing you must have noticed if you don't specify other parameters it will take the numeric variables and it will give you the um, average of those values over here right so you see here we got the parameters now we require the count only right so we can just specify agg func agg func and over here you can just say count now you hit enter this is what you are getting count is applicable on character variable and numeric variables both but here it is giving you all the variables so that's why you can specify that look i don't want to have all the variables so for that what you can do is in values column we drag and drop the income variable right so that's what we are going to do over here as well income now here you are going to have the exactly same format what you have over here right accountants four and and so on so i just hope that it is pretty clear now let's say next thing you want to see for this profession what are the genders how this income uh, how this count of applications are distributed by gender so what you can do is you can pick gender from here and you can drop that into the column segment you see over here now the same thing you can do over here as well if you remember from the first slide we saw that instead of columns box we have columns parameter over here and into this you can just specify whatever columns you want to use gender now you just do this and here is what you get you see like you can see over here right so for accountants there are four female no male here four female no male same way it it follows along okay now there is one more thing which you notice over here you see this is blank that means there are no applicants who are male and their profession is accountants or cooking staff or core staff right so sometimes we wish to have zero in place of this blank so how can you do that just right click on this go in pivot table option and in this particular cell what you do is for empty cell shows zero and this is what you're gonna go get over here the same thing you can also do over here what you can do is just there is one parameter which is called fill values and over here just pass zero so previously wherever you were getting nan now you are getting c this look much better all right now the next thing which we want to see over here is this is the this is the profession now we also want to have the segment out of this who all let's say there are four accountants out of these four accountants how many of them have their own house and how many of them don't have their own house that's what we want to see how can we do that so let's drag and drop this over here now you can see people who don't have their own house there are one accountant okay and uh, same way there are three accountants who have their own house if you want you can do the adjustment in pivot i'm not going because this video is not for excel so that's why i'm not going to explain how you can arrange this but i'll show you in um, this pandas how can you do that okay now in the index because here we dragged and dropped the own house column in rows box so you know index parameter is something which replaces the rows box okay so here what we can do is we can just put in the uh, in this square bracket we just gonna use own house this thing all right now you see over here this is beautifully arranged right so the people there is just one accountant who does not have own house and there are three accountants who have their own house right this is beautifully arranged now if you want to have this all filled with this value what you can do is you can simply say reset index reset index now when you say this you see how it looks this is looking much better right and then and, and is repeated and why 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 is repeated all over here so this is how you can play around this if you want to have this own house segment subsetted in 
in place of row heading if you want to have in column heading that you can also do over here you just need to make adjustment of the quotations and that's where you get it all right so you see in female accountants there are one account there is just one accountant who does not have house three accountants who have their house right in male there are no accountants okay so you see this is how you can play around with this now when you come over here what happens is like here you have income it, you have used the income variable to take the counts now let's say you want to have sum of that right what you can do is you can again drag and drop over here right and here you got the sum all right so here also what you can do is in ag func parameter you put this in the list and over here you can just say sum and now you have the sum as well for all of them right this is the sum segment this is the count segment now one more thing which you notice over here same way if you want to find average so you can do average as well you can just do here you can just say mean and here you're gonna have all these things right so similarly uh, in numpy whatever the aggregative functions are there you can use into this all right so i just hope that it is clear to you right this segment is particularly for count now to keep it simple i'm going to remove them all because i'm going to explain something some more bit of it okay now here we have the count one more thing which you notice over here is this total here it is totaling of all these things right you see over here it is total you are uh, it, this pivot is totaling how can you have that done over here as well so for that what you can do is there is one parameter which is called margins right and in margins you can just say true and here is what you get you see margins here all three one four that is summed up over here 25 all them are summed up at row level and here at the bottom it is summed up at column level okay so you, this is how now here it just says all what if you want to name it differently so there is one more parameter which is called margins name and you can just say grand total right now you see over here it says grand total so this is how you can play around this now i'm just going to tell you one more very interesting thing but before that i need to keep it simple and for that what i'll do is i'll remove rest of the things from here as well okay and now in instead of profession i'm going to keep app data right and you see over here it is aggregated basis on years right so how can we do that over here so for that what you can do is just say app i'm going to create another pivot table for this but if you want you can do that into the same pivot table also so here in index if you just put uh, the column app date and here in values i'm just going to take zender column you can take whatever you want and ag func i'm going to use count and you see how does it looks so here it is giving you by each of the day now there is one functionality which is called grouper so grouper is something which you can learn using in detail using this particular thing right but i'm just going to show uh, tell you in short over here so what you can do is you can simply say pt dot grouper sorry it starts with capital g okay and into this you need to supply the variable on which you want to do the grouping so that i want to use app date and then you need to supply the frequency parameter what all are the frequencies that you can use so that is given over here you see this you can just open up this and there are these are all the frequencies which you can use like you can see weekly frequency month end frequency uh you know semi month end etc etc many of the frequencies are available so here i'm just going to use y because we want have exactly what we have in excel you see here for 2022 there are 16 for 2020 there are 16 applications and for 2021 there are 84 applications that's exactly what we get over here right now if you want to put it on month level that's something which you can also do now you see it is putting it at the month end level for each of the month that we have available in our data that's something which you can also do over here what you do is you just go over here in this 
and just deselect all these things just put months and you get right over here so to make it more meaningful here you should also keep years and now you have this so this is how you see we can arrange the pivot table now further if you want you can uh, put it in a different separate data frame and you can export that in excel or wherever if you want so i just hope uh, it was clear to you just in case of any doubt put that into the comment section i'll definitely try to get uh, back to you and clear your doubt thank you very much for watching the video give a thumbs up if you like it and share with your friends wish you all the very best